it's Wednesday when you're seeing this. That means that tomorrow on Thursday is the first day of Truck World in Toronto, Ontario. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you haven't been watching all of my videos lately. <laughs> I forgive you. Truck World is on from tomorrow, Thursday to Saturday, April 21st to 23rd at the International Centre in Toronto, Ontario. When you're watching this, I'm already there. We're setting up. We're getting ready for tomorrow. Really love it. If you're in the area, if you could come out and hang out for a little while and check out the show, it's going to be huge. I'm going to be at Booth 20 along with Keystone Western. If you want to come by there, say hello to us. That'd be great. If you can't find me there, I'm going to be walking the floor, checking out all the other exhibitors and stuff, everything that's going on there. You can find out more about the show at www.truckworld.ca. And on that website, you can register for admission. Now, when you go there, there's going to be a little slot up there for a promo code. Use my promo code, T-W-J-O-S-H, and that'll get you free admission. It'll get you in the door for free, and all you got to do is come show up and hang out. Either Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. So the next couple of videos throughout the week will be from the floor of Truck World. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm, I don't know if you can tell, but I've been really excited about this. This is a really big event. They invited me to come there, so that's special on its own. I'm really excited about that. I'm also going along with Keystone Western, so it's it's like a big company trip, and be really cool if you could come out too. And it's free if you're in the area or anywhere within driving distance. I hope to see you there. To be honest, this is my first Truck World experience. The last Truck World was in 2018, and I've looked it up on YouTube, on Google, and uh, it looked like a lot of fun. They had to shut it down for a few years because of COVID and stuff, but they're back. And I'm not too sure what to expect, but judging by all the videos and stuff from 2018, there's going to be a lot to see and do there. So I'm hoping I can get around <laughs> throughout the three days that I'm there. It might take the full three days just to get around and see everything and meet everybody, but we're going to do our best. So if you are at the show, make sure you uh, come say hello to me if you do see me walking around there. And uh, we'll see what happens, right? We'll see what happens. Anyways, on with the vlog. We had a little bit of snow in today's vlog. And when I'm filming this, it's not much better. This is like mid-April. Uh, let's just let, let's get on with it. Let's get on. Sense. Look at this. Just look at it. Would you just look at it? Look at this. Just look at it. Mid April. No, this isn't exactly normal for Manitoba, but it's not unheard of either. It's happened before. Last time we had a big blizzard like this in April, it led to the flood of the century in 97. I remember those days. I remember helping sandbag. I was a younger kid then. I think I was nine years old. Born in 88, so that makes sense. And a lot of southern Manitoba flooded from the Red River. And since so much of this snow fell in North Dakota, which is upstream from the Red River, even though on the map it looks like it would go downstream, right? No, it's actually uh, the water in the Red River from North Dakota flows into Winnipeg and into Manitoba. So all of that snow, once it melts down there, is coming up here to Manitoba. And it makes its way up to Lake Winnipeg and then up to the Hudson's Bay up north in the ocean. So uh, let's hope and pray that, you know, our flood waters, that not everything uh, gets too crazy and out of hand with floods here. 
I mean, the good thing is that we've already had the majority of our snow from the winter melt away already and go into the river and head up north. So we don't have the entire winter snow melting all at once. So that's a good thing. I mean, I think we should be okay, but I'm not a scientist. Well, we got the truck all warmed up. Uh, got ready for the day. And the weather out here is nuts. Nuts. I mean, you're not going to believe me if I show you the way it is here in town. I'm in Ildeshane here right now, which is uh, just down the road from our yard. I just got a call from my dispatch saying, you know what? We're shutting down for the most part. There'll be a few people in the office to answer calls and stuff, but the perimeter around Winnipeg is closed apparently. Everything west of Winnipeg, all the roads are closed. The southeast where I'm from, the roads are still open, but it looks like they'll be getting closed around noon today, maybe sooner. It's 8 o'clock right now, and around 11 o'clock there's supposed to be another like huge blizzard rolling in. Like, uh, worse than this. So they figure, you know what? Better safe than sorry. May as well head back home. And tomorrow it may be the same thing, because uh, there, this storm is supposed to last through till tomorrow as well. I'll call in first thing tomorrow before I leave. And if I do go in, it sounds like it'll be a bit of a short day. So, back home we go. Maybe I'll do some work in the shop. See what happens. Snow. I'm, I'm filming this on April 14th, for trying out loud. Even as a Manitoban, I'm looking around like, all right, okay, come on. Come on, right? Usually even we have like green grass beginning to grow at this time of year. Huge sometimes usually, but not this. But I'm not complaining. I mean, it is what it is. I live where I live. This region is prone to this kind of weather. And I'll take this weather any day over hurricanes, over massive tornadoes in the south of us, in the US Midwest. We get some tornadoes around here, but not like they do down there. They get a lot. We get. We're at, the, we're at the northern edge, the, the northern tip of uh, Tornado Alley, so we do get some. We get no hurricanes, we get no earthquakes, we get no tsunamis. Uh, we don't really have any poisonous animals here that'll kill you, not that many. I mean, the winter pretty much kills off anything that's poisonous. So you can go walking through the woods and not worry about getting like bit by a, bit by a snake a poisonous snake or something. Like I walk through the bush all the time. The worst thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna get poison ivy or a bunch of wood ticks, which could be bad because they carry Lyme disease. And that could be really bad too. So there are threats here too. I mean, we got bears, but they're scared of you. You see a black bear, we have black bears. We don't got grizzlies. You see a black bear in the woods. I mean, they'll see and hear you and smell you before you see them, unless you sneak up on them. As long as they don't got cubs with them, they'll go bolting away. They want nothing to do with you. They want nothing to do with you. But if they have cubs, all right, all you got to do, you see them, you see the cubs, walk away from the cubs slowly. Just turn around and be like, nope, not my monkeys, not my circus, okay? Those are not mine. Walk away from the cubs. Don't go up and pet them. It's very tempting. They're very cute and fluffy. You want to go there and pick them up. Because the, the cubs, they don't know any better. They'll come right up to you and be like, oh, friends. They're not your friends. You're not their friend, all right? Mama Bear's around the corner somewhere, and when she sees you near her cubs, she'll rip you to she'll rip you to shreds. So that's the only thing you gotta worry about. Watch for cubs. And they're usually around early, like late spring, early summer, and then they grow throughout the summer, and then they hibernate for winter. Uh, what else we gotta worry about? We got wolves. But again, as long as you're not by yourself and uh, in the woods, just be aware of your surroundings that they're not stalking you or anything. Like coyotes, they're too small to do anything to you. They might attack your dog though, so watch out for your dogs. Uh, we got uh, some cougars, like cats, the cat kind. Not that other kind. I mean, I'm sure we got those around here too somewhere. I don't know, but no, I don't got, I mean the cat cougars. Not too many, but we do have probably about a hundred or so in the region. I mean, it's a big region and they do get sighted. Now, they're gonna see you. You'll never see them. If you see them, it's already too late. All right? They've been stalking you and they're hungry. But 
that's very, very, very rare. I don't even think there's a recorded instance in Manitoba history of a cougar attack on a human. We're just told to be careful. I don't think it's ever happened in history. You guys can Google that and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments section. But other than that, Manitoba, like, we're in the middle of the continent, so, you know, we don't really have the risk of invading armies rolling across the border in their tanks like in other regions of the world where people just invade their neighbors for no reason. The U.S. is our best friends. They're our family. We're the same people. We just have slightly different social views in politics. But nothing that would cause a... We are the two closest nations of any nations in the world. We have the longest undefended border in the world. An hour and a little bit south of here, about 70 miles south of here, there's a U.S. border. It's just a field. There's not even a line. I mean, I think that they cleared one at one point. You could just walk across. I mean, they'll know. If you walk into the U.S., they got, like, drones and satellites and stuff watching the world. They'll know, and they'll come get you. So don't try it. It's very illegal. Don't do that. They really don't like that. And we don't like it either when people come this way. But usually they're going the other way for some reason. I don't know. So don't do that. But it, it's... We don't have to worry about the U.S. invading us. So here in Manitoba, the center of the continent, in order for an invading army to get here, they would have to go through the U.S. <laughs> Good luck with that. They'd have to come up through the north, past Alaska, which is the U.S. Good luck with that. They could come through the Hudson's Bay, but Greenland is right there, and the U.S. has military bases up in Greenland. Good luck with that. You could come down through our north that's undeveloped. There's no roads and just forests as far as the eye can see. Good luck getting your tanks through the forest with no roads. You could come from the east in Newfoundland or Nova Scotia, but then you go through the... There's a little uh, bottleneck in Nova Scotia right going into New Brunswick. You can't get through it. All we got to do is blockade that, and you're not getting in there. You could come down the St. Lawrence, but again, you're coming right past the U.S., right by New York State there. Good luck getting past them. You could come from the west. Then you got to... All we got to do is blow out the bridges... And you're not going to get through the mountains with your tanks from the west coast to get to Manitoba. So you can't get to us from the north because Russia is our northern border, right? Our, our northern neighbor. They're on the other side over there. They, we literally have a border bordering with Russia. They're our neighbors. We don't get along so well. But they can't come over the north because the U.S. is in Alaska, Greenland, and our landscape. They cannot invade. It's impossible can't come from the west there's the mountains we'll just blow up our bridges you can't get through you can't come from the east because there's one bridge connecting eastern canada and western canada we just blow up the one bridge you can't get your tanks here unless you're going to drive them through the river how are you going to get to us right winnipeg is practically uninvadable unless if you come by air and winnipeg remember is an air force city you're going to come over and you're going to fly in to the heart of air force country in canada and not to mention a few hours that way, a few hours south, there's the Minot Air Force Base in the U.S. So you got the U.S. Air Force right there. You got the Canadian Air Force right here. You fly in to the center of the continent, you are not going to get very far. So we're a, what I'm trying to say is Manitoba is it's a good place to be. I'll deal with the blizzards because it's, it's a good place to be. Not a lot of bad things can happen to you other than getting snowed on and freezing to death. Just stay warm and you're good. Back at the shop here and uh, you'd be surprised how much work it is to keep this floor clean in the winter time. <laughs> but that's okay. I've got this, uh, this floor squeegee here. Unfortunately, these shops were not built with drains in the floor. Uh, I don't know why but they don't have any drains. And that's fine, I just gotta squeegee it out of here. Uh, it's not really a problem, except in uh, wintertime when we have snow like this, and I have, you know, my vehicle parked in here with snow on it, and it melts onto here. I had it parked on this side, so I moved it to that side. And I gotta push all the water out the door. But that's okay. Gotta keep it clean, right? I don't wanna have a dirty shop. It's not the cleanest shop. Like, don't get me wrong. When I say I like clean vehicles, I like uh, clean shops. I like everything to be clean. I'm not uh, a germaphobe. I'm not, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Like this floor here, 
that's okay. It just, I don't want it to be filthy. It's a shop, it's, it's a space that's going to get dirty. It's a dirty space. But at least, as long as we can minimize it, I don't want to look like a slob when I have friends stop by here, or when the wife comes by to check on me, or whatever else, or when the doors open and people are looking in. I don't want them to look in and be like, oh man, how does he work in that filth, right? So. I do my best to keep it as clean as possible. I like having a clean floor, just so that if I have to get underneath the vehicles, that I don't have to get myself all filthy dirty. Yeah. And once again, it's something I enjoy doing. It's therapeutic to me. Gotta keep up with it, because if you don't keep up with it, it gets out of hand. And then you got a big problem. So I like fixing problems when they're small before they turn into big problems, you know? Clean it up when, you, when it'll only take, you know, 10, 15 minutes, instead of waiting until, you know, you gotta spend a whole day. I mean, not even perfect, but you gotta, you gotta make an effort. It's not so bad when there's no snow outside, because then not a lot of this water gets in here. a day. <laughs> Watch it buddy, you're on the ice there. People, you know, the snow melts and they have dry roads for a week and they all forget how to drive on the ice. <laughs> sold? What's sold? A building sold? Or those condos? Someone bought an apartment. I don't understand condos, but I guess I can sort of see the, the benefit of not having, you know, yard work and stuff, but still, you can't choose who your neighbors are then. Like, what if you have a noisy neighbor? Now you bought it. Now it's yours. That's your hole in the sky. You know, that's your little box in the sky. That's your that's your hole in the wall. But houses are uh, pretty expensive in some areas of the city. Uh, pardon me, some areas of the country. Manitoba's not so bad, but uh, man, some other areas of the country, just ridiculous. You know the average house across Canada costs almost $900,000? Which is probably about 700,000 American. I'm just guessing, somewhere in there. That's the average house in the entire country. Look at that house right there. That house is beautiful. The average house in Manitoba is definitely nowhere near that. But you know, it's, it's pretty high still. Probably like you know, 400,000 or so. But uh, the majority of people, they live in you know, Toronto and Vancouver. And to get a house there, I don't know what they're doing out there, but you know, people are moving in in droves from pretty much every corner of the globe, and they all go to Toronto and Vancouver, right? And they're not building the houses to, to, to support that many people. So all these people move in, and they don't got enough houses, so the, the price of houses skyrockets. And then there's another problem where they let foreigners, uh, Chinese people do this quite a bit. The wealthy Chinese, they come in and buy properties and use it as investment. So they don't actually live in the house, they just buy it and it sits there empty. They wait five years, the market goes up, and then they sell it and buy a different house. They don't actually live in these houses, right? It's a big problem in Vancouver. You guys like my new shirt from Tony Justice? Tony Justice Music. Trucker Josh. That's what's the back there. It's like from Bullsnot and Tony Justice. It's perfect. Yes, it looks good on you. Spilt a little bit of milk on it before, I don't know you can see it. <laughs> Cause you're Josh. I know what. What's all this? Who knows? Who knows? And coffee. You got coffee on yourself earlier. <laughs> yeah, I'm a mess. <laughs> you can dress them up, but you can't take them out. You can't even keep them home. <laughs> so what's up now? Trigger shot time. I'm What's letting, that mean? I'm letting these ones warm up. They're in the fridge. Let's explain to the good people what a trigger shot is. I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it just like, it triggers you to uh, be ready for surgery on Saturday. Yeah, 36 hours from now, I think things release and make it easier for them to get the eggs out. I I don't exactly know the science. I just do what they say and write down on my sheets to read. Mm -hmm. 
If you're just tuning in and are new here, Britt, my wife and I, we're uh, in the middle of an IVF uh, procedure or journey, and she's been taking needles in her stomach every day for a week now. And uh, on Saturday, she goes in for surgery for egg retrieval. They have at least 11 eggs that they're going to take out of her. And then... Uh, this is actually my ninth or 10th day on needles. Okay, so it's more than a week. Yeah. But uh, most important part is uh, Saturday's my big day. Yeah. Before her surgery. Big contribution. Thinking about dressing up, getting a bow tie, maybe a top hat and a cane, walking in there. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. It's not been a good day for my body. Mm. At the beginning, it barely, uh, it barely affected her at all, but... We're right at the end of it right now. Um, a body, female body would naturally produce about one egg every cycle, right? She has at least 11 in there right now. At least maybe they saw 14 at one point. We're not too sure if there's still 14, but there's at least 11. The number changes every ultrasound, so sometimes they're hiding. So this is the last needle she has to take before Last three needles. Last three? There's three of them? There's three triggers. For crying out loud. <laughs> Never ends, does it? No, it sure doesn't. And then she might need to take needles once she's pregnant, too, just to keep the pregnancy healthy. We, we don't know yet, but uh, sure, we'll find out. Sure, because I have out. a history of uh, losing pregnancies, so we'll see. We shall see. This calls for a near beer. <laughs> Mm. I love the taste of beer, but uh, I've made a commitment to not drink any alcohol throughout this whole process until she's done breastfeeding. If I can. I'm not sure if I can last that long. I'm pretty sure I can. You can. Some days I'm wondering, but at least until she gets pregnant, right? Got to make sure my swimmers are as healthy as possible. That was the main goal. But then I figured, well, if she's pregnant, she can't drink. So it's not really fair if, if I do. I figured I'd wait until she can have a drink too. We can have a drink together to celebrate. But not like it's that big of a deal. But I think it's been 10 months now since I've had any alcohol. And we've been trying to have uh, to get pregnant since 2017 or 16, somewhere in there for a while. Uh, August 2017. Mm -hmm. A month Two weeks to a month before we got married, we started. I think it was the end of August 2017. I don't know the exact day that I went off the pill, but mm -hmm. I'm trying ever since. So here we are. This is the sort of the climax of the of everything we can do. Other than try again. Try, try, and try again. Yeah. Until my body says no. Oh, Instagram. She's gotta gonna Instagram this. Gang gangster. I gotta do this right when you get okay. your fingers out of the shot. Very important. Everybody photobomb. <laughs> Alright, so this is do you have to is a powder in there? What's yeah. some big ones this time? Yikes. Yeah. Bigger so than the last ones. Oh we got HCG shot here. We'll start with that one. And then these ones are tripton. Kryptonite. I, I don't know. Fancy medical names. You Oops. know how to do these? Cause I don't. Yeah, it's same as the Menifer, just bigger. You have three needles. Oh, these are already. You just inject them like that, yeah. so you don't need to do anything with those. No, you I just, just need gotta to push them up. And... Oh, yeah, that yeah. big horse needle. Yeah, this you one know. doesn't go into me. This is a mixing needle. Just you, for the record. Can you imagine having to stick that into you? It's just a longer one just to fit into the vial. The one that she yeah. uses isn't actually that. <laughs> that would suck. Like, this isn't 1960, so. And that's just water, right? Saline solution, yeah. Saline solution. Is that fancy doctor talk for water? Uh, it's salt water. So oh, it's ocean. It's uh, sodium chloride, I'm pretty sure. So they just went to the ocean and filled her up? I guess so, yeah. Put a fancy sticker on it and boom. 
Uh, worth 250 bucks. Yeah, right? Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Bacteriostatic water for injection. Bacteriostatic, so they put static in it? Not for use in newborns. I don't know. I have no idea what's going on. Usually it's... I guess this one's just different. I have one job. Racing against the clock here. They want it right in me at 9.30, but I guess I should have gotten started a little early. It's okay, it's just a couple minutes. Couple well, minutes. That clock's, I'm sure it's fast. Okay, mixed her up. Oh, okay. Here we go. So now she takes the big horse needle off of there. Put that down. And she puts on the human one. <laughs> the well, people. That won't hurt so much. That's a little more doable. <laughs> All right. All right. Prepare to be triggered. Please ignore the largeness of my stomach. It has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger with every shot, and it hurts. A lot of swelling here. A lot of swelling. It's probably been the most uncomfortable part of this. I can handle the nausea, the mild mood swings, even the pain from the needles, the bruising. And the fatigue, but it, it's the the bloating hurts the most. No one in here is gonna judge you. <laughs> I mean, I was chubby to begin with. I realize this. I really like food. <laughs> okay, turn away if you don't like needles. I'm triggered. You were waiting that whole time just to say that line, weren't I you? Was. <laughs> Two more pre-mixed injections. One there, one there, and that's it. The bloating, it's getting harder and harder to pinch the skin. Oh, that's a lot of, a lot of liquid. <laughs> Oh, wow, that doesn't feel good. No, nope, not even a little bit. All right. There's one. Whew. One last one, ladies and gentlemen. One last one. Uh. That bruise you see there is still from her very first one, like 10 days ago. <laughs> it's the first, the first one bruised, and the rest of them hardly did anything. Except sort of swell up the whole area. And get itchy. Itchy. Gotta find an open spot. It's not easy. I have a little torso. And they're all, it's full of like 30, 35, 40 needle injections. I don't even know anymore. I've lost count, to be honest. Man, your poor stomach. It's just, what has gone on? Prime that one, and then she'll be ready. Last one. Okay. Um, <laughs> there's no spots left. Okay. Let's go with this. I also had to take needles this morning, too. <laughs> Almost there. And wait for it. Boom. Nailed it. All right. 941. Could have done better, but I was a little bit anxious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. All full of holes and basically a pin cushion at this point. And I bruised. Oh, actually, it's healing up, but I was, like, black and blue all over my arm from all the blood tests. Slow but sure. So tomorrow, no needles, right? Tomorrow's my one day off. No, no needles, needles tomorrow. Day after tomorrow is the retrieval surgery and my big day. And I finally get some good drugs. <laughs> I 
And I gotta, you know, I gotta stretch, warm up first thing in the morning, make sure I'm ready to go. <laughs> Limber up. Limber up. You know. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. <laughs> yeah. It's been a long time coming. Just waiting. I'm ready. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. <laughs> we were joking around yesterday. <laughs> it was on the vlog, right? I think so. We were really tired yesterday. Really tired. And get me a bow tie. Dress up a little bit. Like a big goofy one. A top I hat and a here. cane. I am here for my contribution. So that's it. One more day. Mm-hmm. Feeling good? Feeling mm -hmm. all right? No? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not at all. My stomach is itchy and swollen. I'm very nauseous and tired. But honestly, it wasn't as bad as I built it up in my head for this part of the experience to be. So all in all, I'm whiny today, but I can't complain too much. And she's uh, actually met some new friends through this whole process that are going through the same thing as her. So it's, it's awesome that... Actually, awesome. one awesome. of them is an old friend <laughs> okay. from elementary school. Turns out her and her husband have been trying two weeks longer than us, and they're two weeks ahead of us in the process. Very coincidental. But uh, yeah, we're old friends from elementary school, and we reconnected on Instagram, and it's really nice to have someone who, who gets it. And uh, yeah, I made a friend in the waiting room at the clinic. I was tired of all the silence. <laughs> this is hard, or as... Uh... Much as I want to be a part of everything and I'm here for everything, there's just some things that I'll never quite be able to relate to as much as I want to or try well, to. Well, if you want, I got some extra needles. We can jab you in the stomach a few times. I still don't have ovaries, so. That's true. You won't I don't know what your grapefruit's you're... growing inside of me right now. No, that is something that is unique to you and the ladies. Never mind, you can't have them. Well, no, I got my own. I'm fine. I'm got good. your own ovaries? No, well, they're man ovaries. <laughs> they're movaries. Movaries. <laughs> like the other day when we went shopping for loofahs, and he's like, no, that's too feminine. I want a moofah. A man loofah. <laughs> so we call them moofahs now. <laughs> yeah, mine are a little different. Yep. For some reason, God decided to put them on the outside. Always getting in the way. It seems inconvenient. It is. It's very. Especially like, you know, getting in and out of the truck when you sit on them. Isn't that, isn't that a pain? Like, literally? I get it. Pretty I'm nice. A, I'm very large chested and I'm very short. So I'm at everyone's elbow level. So you can imagine how often I have bruising. <laughs> it's very annoying. Like out in public, you know, back in the day when there were large crowds. Or when I used to go to concerts and the mosh pits and stuff, just get elbowed all the time. Oh, that would hurt. Yeah. What can you do? I've lived. <laughs> Anyways, I guess we'll uh, continue this chat tomorrow then. And uh, thanks for watching all the way to the end. What should be the secret word that they have to put in the comment section today? Um, cotton-headed ninny muggins. And if you okay. know where it's from, comment the movie as well. Okay, you heard it here. Cotton-headed ninny muggins. Okay, go and type that in the comment section right now, just so we know you watched all the way to the end through all of that cringy conversation. I can't wait to see the way some people are going to spell this. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one.